A really important new study about the causes of fractures has come out that's super helpful for those of us with osteoporosis. I'm going to tell you all about it. I'm Alison Crouch of the Movement Method for Osteoporosis, and I'm your cheerleader in all things osteo and exercise. So this study is an analysis of data from the Canadian Multicenter Osteoporosis Study that included over 9,000 people, 69% female, with and without low bone density of all ages. They tracked fractures for 10 years to find out the causes of fractures, including specific info for those of us with low bone density and osteoporosis. 84% of the fractures happened to people who had low bone density, 54% with osteopenia and the rest with osteoporosis, which totally makes sense because there are more people in the osteopenia zone. And for everyone, falls were the number one cause of fractures. And for those with low bone density, that also included vertebral or spinal fractures. And I know we all want to focus on increasing our bone density, but I can't be more clear about this. You can have an excellent, full, satisfying, energetic life with low bone density, but falling and fracturing is no fun, and it gets in the way of that satisfying life. Osteo Canada says that progressive, challenging balance training is our number one priority, and this is why. It takes a long time to potentially increase bone density and to maintain it through exercise. And you can see that a number of those falls and fractures happen even with people in the osteopenia level. But training to improve balance, agility, coordination, and strength are faster ways to stay fracture-free and make the most of your life. There are also instances of vertebral fractures that don't involve a fall or an injury that people reported as being due to everyday activities, mostly that involved bending, twisting, and lifting heavy things. And this does not mean we don't do those things or move like robots. It means we stay active, we work on smart, intentional exercise and mobility, and we practice lifting heavy things in an exercise context so that we have the skills and the strength when it comes to doing them in everyday life. This is where we use spine sparing strategies. We master our hip hinges and we learn more awareness of our movement patterns. Having variety and options in the way that you move every day means you run less risk of overloading your spine for those kinds of vertebral fractures. And you train for the life that you love. Do two, at least two good challenging balancing sessions a week. Do two to three strength training sessions a week. Have all your exercise progress and get more challenging over time. And this is how we thrive with osteoporosis. So here's to you and your awesome self. You can get more details in the caption below. Mwah.